there's a push pin right right over here. There we go. If I know I could get the bolt off, you might as well take off the belts. I know I could get the belt bolt off now. So I always start the job saying, wondering if I could get this bolt off because there were some cars without that high mass impact socket where I couldn't get this bolt off. <sighs> So I'm using this high mass 22 millimeter impact socket with this recently purchased on sale cheapo OEM half inch impact driver. I just wonder if it generates enough torque to take that pulley bolt off. Nope. That didn't work so now I'm using this cheapo northern tool AC electric impact tool. Wow, that generated the torque. By the way, this mo side motor mount has to be uh, replaced. See that crack? Now, let's see if this thing is... <sighs> okay, this is rusted in place. stuck to here. It usually gets stuck to the side motor mount. It doesn't matter as long as it came out. Another one back here. Okay. Now we got it. Now we got some room. back here, right down there. So we're going to push this power steering hose down and then lift the cover up. Here we go. So there's four bolts on the bottom and there's five bolts on the top because this lower cover overlaps the top cover over here. So the easiest thing to do is get these cover bolts off first from the bottom then work on the top cover.
I'm going to take this bracket off. These are studs. There's two studs and two bolts for the side motor mount. So we remove the stud nuts. Now we're going to be removing bolts to remove the side motor mount. So this stud will have to stay in the bracket while we move the bracket off the studs. Or you could use an e-sock and take the studs out. So don't forget, when you put the belt back on or you put this back on, keep this in here. All right, we're going to move the crankshaft to top that center. So you put the crankshaft bolt back in place. Just slightly torque it down. And this dot right over here, we're going to move it to this little hump that's right over there. Okay, now we go top side and see if the camshaft's on the line. And this little notch lines up with this little groove right up here. Now that we have everything lined up, we'll be removing the timing belt tensioner bolts so we can physically remove the tensioner. Now we have to move the bracket down to get to the other bolt. There. Okay. There. This little bolt goes here, and we got a long bolt that goes over here. All right, so I'm going to remove the belt starting from the, the tensioner pulley. And there it is. Okay, I'm removing the camshaft pulley dust shield. Remove that from here. There's no oil seepage yet from the cam seals, but we're going to replace it anyway. So there's three bolts and three nuts, three bolts on the right side of the water pump and three nuts on the left side. Okay, we're relieving the pressure on the cooling system by removing the cap. Now we'll break the seal on the water pump. Just try to get this in between the seal here. Oh, man, that was in tight.
Okay, we're using a paint can lid removal tool to get more leverage to get this seal out. <clears throat> there we go. So here are the two cam seals. This is the crank seal. We're going to coat it with silicone and set it in place before we push it in. So we're using silicone grease, also referred as plumber's grease and dielectric grease. This is a Toyota specific camshaft seal press tool. It's a cup and it'll evenly put pressure on the seal so it goes in and won't get cockeyed or lopsided. All right, we're flush. Okay, that's flush. As soon as you start feeling some resistance, then you know that the uh, seal is bottomed out. Okay, that looks, that feels seated. Quarter inch ratchet wrench with a 10 millimeter socket and making it hand tight. I don't go, I don't use 3 8 inch ratchet wrench because it may generate too much torque and you could potentially shear the bolt heads off. I'll put a little dielectric grease on here. So I'm going to put a little paint mark right here. We're doing this so that we have an easier time visually lining up the camshaft sprockets with the backing plate. This notch over here, we're going to put a paint alignment mark. And this little notch right over here in the front portion of the cam. So we align this slightly to the left of the backing plate mark so we can mount the belt on easier. Then once the belt is on, then we'll move it clockwise so that will relieve the slack. This tensioner pulley is for a 1MZ. What we're replacing the pulley on is a 3MZ, so we're just going to transfer the pulleys. Okay, now we're going to mount this. This is a new belt. This is the belt direction, which is that away. This is the alignment for the right camshaft. This is for the left camshaft. So we'll mount the back or the left camshaft first. I'm going to use this clip to prevent the belt from popping off. Because the right camshaft has been moved slightly back, it was very easy to mount this belt 
with the alignment mark. Now that the belt's on, we'll move the camshaft slightly forward to remove the slack. Okay, so with the removal of the slack, the camshaft sprocket is in perfect alignment with the, the mark on the backing plate. Now we'll move the crankshaft one counterclockwise to the left to ease installation of the belt. Put the belt over the water pump. We've got it over the crankshaft. Now let's see if I got enough slack to get it over the tensioner pulley, which I do. Okay, here we go. See all this slack. When I move it clockwise, I remove the slack off the belt. Now we're going to put this little bracket in here. That prevents the timing belt from slipping off. Okay, now if I move the crankshaft clockwise, it'll tighten the belt up. There's no more slack on this side. Now we'll put on the timing belt tensioner, but we've got to compress the center pin. All right, so we'll mount it right here on the edge. So for every turn, it gives resistance, and then the resistance slacks up. Get this lever up. So everything should be tight now. See that? All right, this side motor mount has to go in with the lower bolt in place. Now we can put this bolt in. This will alternate a bracket. Here, there's a nut down here in this corner, and then we just need to tighten everything up. And we're done.